there are many other situations where the body is the primary source of information, like where your feelings really are the primary source of information. So you're in relationship with someone else. It doesn't, it could be romantic, a friendship, professional. Um, and there could be all kinds of good reasons why you're supposed to feel a certain way about their, your interactions. But the real like gold standard is like, how, do, how does it feel to be around that person? And to tell yourself, oh, they're so successful, everyone likes them, but I feel like horrible or worthless around them, so I should stay in the relationship. You know, most of us would agree probably isn't that wise or skillful. So there are definitely places where we would want to listen to our body, especially when we move into um, unknown situations and we're trying to feel our way through them, like having more information is probably good. But also when we're in, in, for, in situations where we're getting a signal like what we expect uh, is, be, is not showing up in terms of our visceral feelings. So objectively, things should be okay, but they're not. Um, and then trying to ignore those signals uh, because, you know, our knowledge system is telling us this is the right thing to do. Um, it can work out in the short term, like I'm really tired, but I'm going to push through and finish this, you know, assignment. Uh, I'm sure many people have that experience in school. But if you keep taking that to an extreme, eventually, you know, you're forced to listen to your body when there's a breakdown. Um, and so being able to be resilient isn't always like just taking more stuff. It's also realizing when you have to, you know, recuperate and recover resources. So the body can be really, really useful um, from that perspective. And I do think it is a skill and an important skill to learn to tune in and pay attention to the body but not to put the body above the mind as though it's always superior, but to actually start to think like, okay, what am I up to right now? Is this the right time to be listening to feelings? Um, like I'm on a date or I'm meeting someone new and, I, and really this is a feeling kind of problem to, or situation, or is this a situation where, you know, I'm trying to do something and it's time to push a little bit past what my feelings say because um, it's, it's so important to me. And I think unfortunately, I'll, um, people tend to valorize just one side versus another, and neither position is going to be as adaptive as being able to kind of toggle between the sort of rational knowledge exploitation system and the sort of visceral, intuitive, um, in the moment integration of what's going on and how it's expressed in your body. Um, and I think you can get much better at listening to your body. I think you can you can probably get even maybe more sensitive to a body signal, but. I think when you when you mentioned like it's not about getting better, maybe it is getting better in a way, but getting better at paying attention, trusting that these signals have information content, like that there's th something you might want to base your decisions on, and then being a bit skillful around when you're going to listen. Um, in most of our studies that we're running now, trying to have more objective measures of interoception, so having people do like a breath monitoring task and getting them to change their breathing a little and seeing like how small a difference in their breathing they can notice when they're like breathing along with with uh you know a circle on a screen the individual differences that we observe which seem like they're reliable in in what's the smallest change in your breath that you can notice uh, have almost no correlation with well-being and even their awareness of how well they're doing in the task doesn't correlate with well-being but their confidence in their ability to make these decisions even if they're wrong is really co is correlated with well-being so it's it's more about like feeling like it's a safe place to go, that you're confident in your ability to negotiate um, the signals you're receiving, regardless of whether you're on the high, middle, or, or low end of the spectrum, that I think is really where you start to see a well-being connection. And hopefully if we can replicate these studies a few more times, we'll start to push this message out a bit more into the mainstream. But you know, careful scientists wanna see, I wanna see it like many times in the lab before I start telling people to change their minds about something.